John Beltran back with Jen Goodall at Speed High School at Longmont as we head to the uh, third quarter. And the Bee Diggers trail the Mead Mavericks 23 to 17. And let's see what the Bee Diggers send out there to begin the third. Well, the Mavericks have got Rex Goldman, who came off the bench in a few minutes at halftime, was very valuable. Scoring five points on two possessions, hitting a three-pointer. So he's out there, along with Ornette Chavez, Austin Hartley, Ryan Lasinski, and Aaron Chung. So they're starting two off the bench here in the third. The diggers are going with their normal starting five of Gregory Mares, Jeffrey Dunker, Randy Baker, Colby Needens, and Captain America. The first hey, that's the first thing you got to do that. Well. You got to go with that, though. I like it for Mitch Tormolin, and of course, you can repeat the story how that began. Well, his, his shoes. Right. They have the blue stars, and they have red for the Nike boots, and a couple other designs, and white underneath. So, you know, and he's an all American kid. Without a doubt, here's Duncan with a basketball. On the outside right, gets a pick from Baker, and that was a definite offensive yeah. foul. Randy was going back, uh, I think, a little bit too much to the uh, football season because he turned his body and he, he stuck did. out his arm. Yeah, he did. The Beat Diggers turn it over for a 10th time, and Baker with his third foul. I don't know if Coach Garcia liked that, but I think that call was obvious. It was. He was talking to Randy. I don't think he was talking to the official. With a basketball on the outside right is Golden. Golden down low for Lasinski, double team to the lane, back out to Golden, three in the air, off the back of the rim, but Chavez grabs the rebound, and he misses an easy one, and Tormolin wrestles that basketball away. Tormolin now has grabbed his fourth rebound. Beatingers in the front court with Dunker on the outside left, left of the lane. Dunker backing out to Baker, penetrates left baseline. Baker all the way gets a defender in the air, banks it, scores. He's moved by Baker. Boy, he certainly atoned for that mistake with that move. That was sweet. He's done that twice in the game. He knows each time he pops his head, he's going to get him up in the air. Yeah, he's got a very effective pump fake there. Lozinski with a basketball back out to Chung. Here's Golden faking a three, but then... He took a strange step there. It's he didn't think the traveling pop. Yep, and that's a traveling violation. Meets 10 turnover. Meets 23, brush 19. With 6.59 to go in the third. Maris with a basketball against Golden. Maris on the outside right to Baker. Baker at the top for Tor Moreland on the outside left for Mares. Mares looking down low at the top for Needham takes the three, and that one is well off to the right. Chasing it down to the right corner is Dunker, but could not get to it. It's out of bounds. Looks like Needham's had the early shooting touch, but the last three have not been really that close at all. I don't think he's been in his rhythm. Like when he's catching it, I don't. I, don't, I, see, I see his shoulders falling back a little bit instead of being forward like a shooter. It's almost like a fadeaway. Well, but really. I think if I remember correctly, he took one three by dribbling to his left, and he yeah. rarely does that. Normally, when he catches the ball, he shoots, but he got a defender in the air. And not on that possession. Down low with the basketball. Tenner for Lozinski. Beatinger is taken away, and it's taken away by Dunker in the front court of the outside left to Mares. Fakes the shot, dribbles into the lane, back out to Baker. Baker to his left to Tormolin. Tormolin back to Baker. 6.15 to go, third quarter. Me 23, brush 19. Baker to his right, over to Colby Needens. Holding the ball of Pius Needens, looking in the right corner. At the free throw line for Dunker, dribbling left of the lane. Jump pass down left for Bears. He's trapped over there along the right baseline, puts up a wild shot and misses. Rebound to Dunker, had it stripped away, but he was fouled. Dunker, another nice job on the boards with his third rebound. And the foul was committed by Orel Chavez. That'll be his first. Feet to get inbounded. In the front court, underneath the basket. It'll be Gregory Mares to throw it in. Mares to the right of the basket. In the right corner for Needens. Back out to Tormolin. Tormolin right of the free throw line. Now on the outside left for Baker. Spinning in the lane. Left corner, Mares. Face the three. Penetrates left baseline. There's runners up and short. And the ball is tipped by Mares into the hands of Chavez. Chavez wants to run for Meade. Only two points have been scored. In this quarter, Lasinski in the lane, and then he get it stripped, and oh, he was fouled as he went up for the shot. Lasinski to the line. Well, I could barely hear the whistle. And the foul was committed by Jeffrey Dunker. That's going to be his first. I didn't hear a whistle. Yeah, I didn't hear a whistle at all. Lasinski to the line. Well, that's why I said I could barely hear it. I, I assumed it was blown. 
I would assume that too. And the free throw is in and out. Second free throw coming. Here is Taylor Nash into the game, replacing Rex Golden for Meade. Second free throw for Lozinski is up, and that's off the back of the rim. And Mr. Mullen grabs his fifth rebound on the outlet to Baker. Here is Gregory Mayers calling out the play for the beat diggers. Still hasn't crossed midcourt with 5.28 to go in the third over to Baker. Baker on the high left for the basketball, and we've got a whistle and an offensive foul. I think Jeffrey Dunker was an enemy up. He committed the foul. It was a wraparound. He tried to gain position down low, and well, he, he used an arm. He's doing a good job for the most part. I mean, he had a smaller player on him, so but you still can't wrap your arm all the way around him. Neither team is in rhythm in this quarter. The only point in the quarter have been scored by Randy Baker. And we have 5.13 to go in the third. Beat Diggers trail to meet Mavericks, 23-19. Harley jump uh, pass cross-court, poked out of bounds by Needham. Intended for Chavez. It'll be Mead basketball. Looks like Brush is back in their 2-3 zone. Started off in man-to-man, so we'll see how they go here. Chavez to throw it in, looking down low. Chavez still looking. going to have to lop it out near the top and does to Desch. Check that to Chuck. Chung back out to Dash on the outside left to Chavez. Fakes the three. Jump pass. Tipped away by Needham. Taken by Hartley. Hartley at the free throw line. 15 footer. Yes. For Austin Hartley. He's got eight. The Mead lead is back up to six. 25 19. 450 to go in the third. Maris with the basketball on the outside left to Baker. Baker looking. Lobs it down low for Dunker. Left of the lane. Dunker dribbles. Turns. Shoots. Misses. On the back. A rebound. Tormullen. And Tormullen is fouled. It looked like he was stopped by Hartley. Well, that's a smart decision. Dunker, Mavericks are playing man-to-man, so Dunker had number two on him, which is a smaller person. So that was a smart play to use his height and his strength post up to get that shot. Lozinski committed the foul. Mayers, right corner three, is off the front of the rim, and Baker was fouled from behind by Chavez. As Baker had the position for the rebound, Chavez commits his second And it will be Pete Digger basketball. Like a good neighbor, State Farm agent Greg Mullen is there. Let Greg Mullen work with you to get the discounts you desire and the coverage you need. State Farm agent Greg Mullen, Mayors, is to lob it in towards midcourt to Baker. Back out to Tor Mullen. Overhead pass, Needham. Left wing three is off to the right. A little bit deep, and the rebound is controlled by Aaron Chung. Here comes Harley. Oh, to Lozinski lays it up in it. Lozinski with the right hand to the left of the basket. Lozinski with 10. Meade has their biggest lead, 27-19. Mayers into the lane, jump pass. Left baseline for Dunker. Dribbles, bounce pass for Mullen. Jump pass to Baker. 15-footer is up and in. Randy Baker was wide open. Boy, that was a huge shot. Meade Diggers needed that. It would have been blown out here. Lozinski right in the lane, lost the basketball. Baker has it, and it looks like, oh, a jump ball. I don't know about that. I thought Baker had the ball. Lozinski found him. There were too many bodies. I couldn't tell what was happening. Possession arrow goes over to Meade or re- Kane's possession it is uh, the Meade Mavericks and to throw it in this Chung. Chung lobs it down low for Harley and it's through his hands. Taken away by Mares ahead of the field. He'll lay it up for Gregory Mares. He went coast to coast. John Beltran, Jen Goodall back from Meade High School in Longmont. We lost you there for a few minutes. We had a breakdown of our phone system. But uh, we're back and ready to go here. As we are early in the fourth quarter, the Beat Diggers did draw to within four, but it's now a 35-28 Longmont lead, a uh, Meade lead. Well, we had some excitement while we were gone. We had technical fouls. Yeah, I mean, and that's what, that's what uh, got Meade the seven-point lead. But anyway, 7-19 to go. The Beat Diggers are still looking to find their stride offensively, and they've committed 18 fouls now. Chavez to throw it in for Meade. On the outside right to Lazinski, and there's a foul, and I think Lazinski pushed off, and he did. That turnover goes to Meade unofficially. They're 15th. It will be Beat Digger basketball, and that's Lazinski's third foul. Beat Diggers need to score here on this possession. Meade with a basketball, left of the lane. Bounce pass, left corner. Baker shot is up and off the front of the rim, and the rebound is controlled. By Titer Triano, his first rebound. Long pass to Chavez. Chavez with seven minutes to go to Lazinski in the lane. Back out to Chavez, takes a dribble. Jump court pass there in the left corner to Triano. Back out to Chavez. 
Chavez over to Taylor Dash, and he will retreat towards midcourt. And Meade is going to slow this thing down. On the outside right to Triano. Triano back to Chavez with a basketball against Albo. Overhead pass is tipped away, and it's by Dunker, but it's taken by Triano. It was intended over there for Griffin Nelson. Lesinski with 12 points in the game. Meade has their biggest lead. 37-28, 6.23 to go. Baker slams into the defender. It looks like a block from here. Oh, boy. It's going to be called an offensive foul on Baker, but that took a while for that to be called. Well, I think there was a little bit of a different opinion in the officials, so they had to go by who was in the right position to make that call. Baker commits his third foul. And it will be Meade basketball. They are up by nine in control with 6.15 to go in the game. Into the front court is Triano along the right baseline. Jump pass to Hartley. Hartley, right corner, Triano. Wide open three. He'll take it. He'll miss it off the back of the rim. Rebound to Ben Southall. Brush. Apple to Dunker. Beat diggers need a bucket here. Dunker in the lane and then has the ball stripped from behind. And it's taken away by Taylor Dash. The beat diggers now have 15 turnovers in the game. Chavez the other way. Triano three in the air. Front rim, no. Randy Baker grabs the beat digger rebound. Baker's got a three-on-three, three, pulls up from 14, yes, for Randy Baker. Baker's had a shooting touch tonight. He's got 10. Yeah, he's coming along quite well. Feet diggers are down, though, 37-35, to 35, 35 to go in the game. Into the front court, Triano with the basketball. Triano on the outside right. He's all line for Hartley in the lane, scoops it up, around and good. For Austin Hartley, up to stop. Hartley now with 12 points in the game. B39, brush 30. Baker the other way, scoops it up, and he's fouled as he went strong to the rack. And the foul was committed by Ryan Lazinski. That's going to be his fourth. Well, this is still, there's, you know, a ton of time left, so this is going to be, like we said earlier, I think it's still going to come down to the wire. And let's see if Baker can score here, and he does from the free throw line. Randy Baker now with 11, second free throw coming up. For Randy Baker, every point is huge, especially in a low-scoring game like we have right now. And free throws up and around and in for Baker, who's got eight of his 12 points in the second half. As we are approaching the five minutes and 15 second mark of the game with Chung to throw it in. In the backcourt to Hartley. Hartley against Tor Mullen, still in the backcourt across the timeline, picked up by Needens. Bounce pass to Chung. Chung cross court to Chavez. It looks like Need is going to take their time. Up by seven. 5.05 to go in the game. Back near the timeline to Hartley. 1305 Edison Street in Brush. CNC Auto Parts is your local Napa Auto Parts store. Chung with a basketball near the top, spinning, fouled. That'll be the 10th team foul against the Beat Diggers and the first against Kyle Rosenbrock. Well, and the Beat Diggers are doing the right thing. If the Mavericks want to hold the ball, as long as they stay within six feet of them, the officials have to count. For all of your title needs, visit Tim Weimer at Northern Colorado Title 205 West Kiowa in Fort Morgan. And welcome home to your hometown grocery store featuring Morgan County's largest variety, the brush grocery cart, and the free throws off the back of the rim. Then the Beat Diggers to win this game are going to need some help. This free throws is to help. And they have struggled. That's seven missed free throws for Meade in the second half. Second free throws up and in. For Aaron Strong, his first point of the game. Meade 40, brush 32 with 4.49 to go in Longmont. With a basketball as Mares guarded by Tesh. Mayer's looking down low, still looking, kicks it near the top over to Nita's long three is off to the left. Stormolin has it. He goes back up and in off the glass for Mitch Stormolin. He grabs his eighth three pound and he scores his fifth and sixth points. 30-second timeout for the beat diggers, only down by six with 4.35 to go. We know how good of a 
defensive team the beat diggers are, but they can't give up any cheap points to Lazinski or Hartley, you know, and they've got to hope that if, if they hold the basketball, they take this free throw. You know, and I'm, I'm looking at their eyes right now, and they have it right now. They want this bad. They did not like those technicals. They did you know, they could test for that as a personal thing, so they're going to go after it. They're going to play hard for these last few minutes of the game. Andy Baker's done a lot of damage. Eight points in the second half. Mitch Torbola and six points have all come in the second half. But one of the keys offensively in this game, Colby Needham has really had an off night. He had two threes in the opening quarter, and since then, nothing. For you know what, though? Just when he starts missing, he's that shooter mentality. He's going to keep shooting until he makes one, and then it's on. No, he hasn't taken a bad shot. No, that's what I mean. I, but a shooter will keep shooting until they make it. Until they feel that, until they see that mental thing, that ball go through that net. Aaron Chung to throw it in. He's got it now in the backcourt off the pass from Desch. Front court pass to Hartley. Hartley was fouled by Rosenberg, but no call. And then he scoops it up, and he with no angle virtually along the left baseline for Hartley. Made 42, brush 34, 418 to go in the fourth. Mayers jump past the knee and back out to Austin Garcia, three in the air, and that's an airborne for Bolton, chases it down, and he throws it into Chavez, who traveled. So essentially, the beat digger's got a break there as Meade commits their 16th turnover, and to the left of the beat digger bench, it'll be Maris to throw it in. Maris looking, bounce pass along the baseline to Garcia, jump pass to Maris. Maris dribbles at the free throw line. 15-footer is off the back of the rim, and the rebound is controlled by Griffin Nelson. Nelson to dash across the timeline. It's a two-on-two, and he scoops it up off the glass. No good. Gregory Maris has the rebound for the beat diggers. His third. Maris pressured by Hartley in the backcourt. Now across the timeline. Maris quickly into the lane. Bounce pass left baseline. Tormolin. Tormolin up top. Needham's three in the air, and that's good. And that's what you were talking about, Jen. And now Needham's with nine. The beat diggers. And when you're a shooter and you see that go in, your confidence goes right back up. Well, they only gave him two. Here's Chavez reverse layup up and in. Chavez scores off the nice speed. He's got six. Yeah, they only gave him two. Oh, I thought that was a three, but not Clearly, there. Maris to Needens to Rosenbrock, and he puts it up and he misses, but he was fouled. Yeah, and I think that should have been a three. Looks like they're going to ask here. Yeah, that was clearly a three. And the foul was committed by Austin Hartley. Yeah, that should definitely be a three-pointer. I don't know if the officials did. Yeah, there they go. So there we go, 44-37. I mean, sorry, not only was that a three, he was like two feet behind the line. Well, no, and that was good of their bench or their first minute. Right, no, no, no the but yeah, because, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not knocking them. I just know oh. Rosenbrock misses the fleet. Oh, he thinkers have got to convert on that end. The diggers have been pretty good at the line tonight, but haven't had many opportunities. Second free throws coming up for Kyle Rosenbrock. They can make it a two-possession game. Here with 3.18 to go, and that one is in and out. For Owen, that's a rebound. Bounce pass to Rosenbrock, and he threw it off the leg of Chung, and I think that was accidental uh, because he was well, he trying stopped, to bounce yeah. to Needham's was down in the corner, so he was trying to get the, get the ball to him. And here is Ryan Lazinski into the game. This guy's been tough tonight. Out. Of the game is Griffin Nelson. Harris to throw it in. Bounce pass to Thorne Mullen. Back out to Baker. Baker to his right hand. We've got a whistle and a foul. But Ed Chavez tried to run through a pick and a screen set by Jeffrey Dunker. And Chavez commits his fourth foul. The beat diggers are back at the line. But it's a one-and-one -one situation as it is the 18th foul. Dunker is two out of two from the line. Dunker is three out of three from the line. The first free throw is in. Now the beat diggers are to within six. Still anybody's ball game with 3.11 to go. Second free throw coming up for Dunker. Goes up and off the back of the rim. Oh, what a rebound! And it's shot and blocked out of bounds by Lozinski. But the beat diggers retain possession. Northeastern Colorado's hometown savings in law with locations at Brush and Fort Morgan. Is equitable savings and loan, and for all of your auto supply needs, stop by Central Auto Parts in Fort Morgan. 
Mayers looking to lob it in, cannot do so. Bounce pass in the right corner for Tormola. Back out to Baker. The diggers can draw to within three with a three. Mayers in the left corner for Alpo. Alpo bounce pass left of the lane to Tormola. Straight away to Needens. Needens at the free throw line. Jump pass to Alpo. He takes the three, and that's well short. The rebound to Needens. Jump pass to Alpo. He diggers reset the offense. On the outside right to Baker. Baker into the lane. Tries to get a defender in the air. He fades and misses. For a moment, with another rebound, and officially is 11th. Back out to Mares. Mares with a basketball timeout brush. That's a good timeout. Get him settled down. 2.36 to go. Tormolin had three rebounds at halftime. He's got eight since then. And that's coming off his last road game when I think we had him for 18 last Friday against an undersized Bertha team. This Mead team is not undersized. That's just Tormolin outworking the Mead offenders and defenders because he's grabbing both offensive and defensive rebounds. Well, rebounding is desire. It's how much you want that ball, how much more you want it than your opponent. That's what rebounding is. That's a, that's a dirty job, as they say. It's a, it's a workhorse kind of job. It takes that kid, it's kind of kid like Mitch Tormolin, who's steady Eddie, and he goes after it and it's willing do that dirty work. Meet 44, brush 38. A timeout brought to you by Edwards Right Price Market in Flowerland at 1201 East Platte Avenue in Fort Morgan. Stop by and get what you need to refuel on game days. Three quarters court. Maris to throw it in with the Meat Diggers down 44-38. Maris to Apple, back to Maris. Meat Digger ladies are up in their game. We'll have an update up here coming up momentarily. And they just won their game 52-30. to 30. The brush girls over Meade in brush. And it looks like a three-second violation called against the Meade Diggers. That unofficially is turnover number 16, and that cannot happen. With 2.25 to go, and the Meade Diggers trailing by six, and Meade is going to hold on to this basketball for as long as they can. Chug front court pass to Chavez. Chavez lost it, picks it back up. Chavez in the left corner for Lozinski. Lozinski against Alpo. Left of the lane. Lozinski in the lane. Back out to Desch. Approaching the two-minute mark of the fourth. Eight leads by six in the left corner. Hartley with a basketball. Down low, Lozinski. Foul from behind by Alpo. And that's probably not a bad foul because you've got to put this team at the line. They're not going to take any shot unless it's a wide-open layup at this point with a minute 59 remaining. Well, and it wasn't a hard foul either. He just had his hand in the back. I mean, if he wouldn't have his hand there, it wouldn't have been a foul. Losinski has 12 points in the game, two free throws. They're in the double bonus, and that one barely got to the rim. Which makes it a good foul. Yeah, automatically. Yeah, I think to me it was a good foul. He would have, he would have had a layup. Yeah, he would have. You know, even with Albo guarding him, he's just got the, the disposition and the height. Second free throw upcoming. John Beltran with Jen Goodall. And that free throws up and in and out. Randy Baker grabs the rebound. Beat Diggers can draw the within four, perhaps three with a three. Baker, jump pass to Dunker, and a little bit too strong. Oh, you can't make those passes, and the Beat Diggers have hurt themselves with another turnover. That's 17 unofficially in the game. One thing is to not score. The other thing is not to even get a shot attempt. With a minute 51 to go. Dash to throw it in, in the backcourt to Hartley against Dunker, frontcourt pass to Chavez. It's a two-on-two. Chavez scoops it up and in off the glass. Chavez now has eight in the game. Need 46, brush 38, a minute 38 to go. Nair to the free throw line. Bounce pass to Needens, right of the lane. Jump pass to Armolin, fakes that shot. Spins right corner to Dunker, steps to his left. Dunker in the lane, is going to put it up and miss, but he's fouled. Dunker with a strong move. And... The foul was committed by Austin the Hartley. That'll be his third. Dunker is three out of four from the line. The sophomore bends, shoots, scores. Made 46 and brush 39. Committed to serving those in production. The Bear Farm Friends is the gold standard in that Lenny. Second free throw is in. The diggers are hanging around, down by only six, 46 to 40, but now... they got to have to yeah. stop and score, Miss Alpo. Get a stop, time too. get a stop, and then score it. Turn it into points. Chung throws it in the backcourt to Chavez. Chavez across midcourt. At the free throw line, bounce pass to Hartley. All the way, scoops it up off the glass and in with a left hand. Austin Hartley at six in the quarter, 10 and a half, 16 of the game. Need 48, brush 40, a minute 12 to go. Needens with the basketball, spinning at the free throw line, back out to Mares. Mares dribbling into the lane, and he puts up a shot. It's off to the left, and the rebound is controlled by Aaron Chung. 
And this basketball game right now is being secured and controlled by Meath. Chavez with the basketball. Bounce pass to Harley. Contact, no whistle. Harley left of the lane. He's going to have to spin it back out and does to Aaron Chung with 48 seconds to go. 48.2 to be exact. He's fouled by Gregory Mares. And assuming the Bee Diggers lose this game, Jen, I'm just going to call it an off-night shooting-wise. It is, and sometimes, you know, when you, you go to different gyms and things, your shooting view is different. I mean, they got a big bowl on the other side there, and that side is blank. So, you know, you look at different things. There's different things in the school, and sometimes it's just an off-night, period. The free throw is up and in by Chuck. That bowl is kind of scary. The eyeball is, like, right behind it the is. board. I'm just... Second free throw coming. You're making a point that nobody else would make, but that's a great point. Because but I'm a shooter, so that's... exactly. Well, oh, you still are. I yeah. thought it was. I thought it was past ten. You think I let the kids beat me in PE? No way. Second free throw at ten, and the meet lead is ten, fifty to forty, with forty-five seconds to go in the game. Bryce Needham's into the front court, right of the lane, bounce pass to Dunker, and we got a whistle and a foul. And you have to wonder why Meade is fouling. That foul is on Chung. That'll be his first. The 19th foul. Make it 10 now. Double bonus. Deedens to the strike. Free throw is up and off to the left. The beat diggers in the half are 5 out of 9 for the line. That's not going to work when you have limited opportunities. Second free throw is up and that is short. And a foul by Dunker in the backcourt as Lazinski grabs his seventh rebound. And with 40.7 seconds to go, it'll take a miracle for the beat diggers to win this one. So here we go with two free throws for Ryan Lazinski. He's got 12 points in the game, and his first free throws off the back of the rim. He's missed five in a row. Wazinski struggled badly for the line, but it hasn't mattered. Torbolin and Maris are out. Kyle Rosenbrock is back in, along with Austin Garcia. b essentially need three-pointers at this point. Second free throw is up and... The main lead is 11. When Ed Chavez is out and Rex Golden is in. Well, these two teams could meet again in the Patriot League tournament. Bryce Needens will pick up the ball at midcourt. Into the lane. Bounce pass down. Nobody traveled prior to that. He was trying to bounce at the Rosendrock. And with 37.1 to go, I don't want to say you call up the dog sort of thing, but if Needs gets it across midcourt, I mean, this is just a... Not a good shooting night for the beat makers. 17 at halftime, 23 in the second half. And Vince Alvo commits the foul in the backcourt on Taylor Desch. Alvo with a second personal and Desch to the line. Although last time they played with Whalers and Kobe Needs, it was just three it's raining. At the end, it's only going to take three of them. Well, with the deficit, well, no, it's going to take four. They're down by 11. Oh, I yeah, didn't see the score yeah, it's just it's too much at this point. First free throw is no good. Here comes the second free throw for Dash, and that's in the air, and that's no. perfect. Thirty-five seconds to go. The beat diggers don't get a three here. The game's definitely over. Thirty-five seconds is still a lot of time. No, it is. Dunker across midcourt. Dunker spinning right of the lane. Dunker back out to Bryce Needham. Needham's along the baseline. Has the ball stripped away, taken away by Taylor Dash. Dash into the front court, spinning, looking, spinning, gets rid of it to Chung over to Hartley. Hartley with the basketball on the outside left to Golden. 16 seconds to go with the basketball now is Chung. Chung spinning along the baseline, feeds it to Hartley with seven seconds left. Over to Dash with five seconds to go. Dash in the right corner, just has to hold the basketball, and that's the end of the game. With the final score tonight, he 52, rush 40. It's a two-minute break. We'll recap it after this on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran, Jen Goodall back from 
Mead High School in Longmont. Welcome to the Bee Digger Post Game Show brought to you by Buildings by Design. The most important thing to buying a new building or starting a new design build project is picking the right company to build it. For a free bid, call Pat Walter or Travis Lefebvre, 970-842-5837. Visit them on the web at buildingsbydesign.com. Well, the Bee Diggers had the early lead of the game, but unfortunately their best quarter was the first quarter. They were up 13-8. Got outscored in the second quarter, 15-4. to four. They were down by six at the break. Drew it within four in the third quarter, but could get no closer as Meade outscored the Beat Diggers 29-23 in the second half. So outscored by six in the first half, six in the second half. They won the game 52-40. to 40. Visiting Beat Diggers had 12 points tonight from Randy Baker, nine from Colby Needens. Next up with six points was Mitch Torbolin, five points from Jeffrey Ducker, and then two apiece from Vince Albo, Gregory Mayers, Bryce Needens, and Kyle Rosenbrock. For the hometown Meade Mavericks, 16 points from Austin Hartley, 13 from Ryan Lazinski. It was Oded Chavez with 8 points, 5 for Rex Golden, 4 points for Griffin Nelson, 3 apiece for Aaron Chung and Taylor Desch. Rebounding totals unofficially, the Beat Diggers at 29, led by Mitch Tormolin with 11, and 7 rebounds for Ryan Lazinski as Meade had 19 as a team, so the Beat Diggers certainly hit the boards hard, and we'll talk about that in just a second because they had their opportunities. Turnovers to Beat Diggers with 19 and Meade with 16 at the free throw line. Meade had 20 free throw attempts all in the second half, or 9 out of 20, 45%. The Beat Diggers were a shade over 50% at 9 out of 16. With a Meade victory, they improved to 8 and 6 overall, 2 and 4 in Patriot League play. The Beat Diggers are now 7 and 6 on the season and 3 and 3 in league play. But again, you look at the rebounds, and the Beat Diggers unofficially out rebound Meade by 10. And again, it just goes back to the central point we made. Beat Diggers just had an off night for the field. Yeah, and you know, sometimes that happens. And if you can continue to out rebound your opponents, you should be able to have wins. Now, tonight was just kind of one of those fluke things where you just had an off night shooting. The boards were there, but we had, you know, Meat had big kids that could block some shots. You know, that, that makes you alter it a little bit as, you know, you get going in the game. It makes you do things that you don't necessarily do normally. So. You know, those are things that you have to learn, and hopefully throughout the rest of the season, they do take a look at the film here and, and take it apart and learn from it. Go on to the next one. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Colby needed to hit those first two threes and then hit another one until the fourth quarter. So I think that was pretty much emblematic of the night the entire Beat Digger squad had. Randy Baker certainly shot the basketball uh, pretty well. But other than that, the Beat Diggers just didn't have it going offensively tonight. Let's see if they can recover uh, when they play. I believe actually not next Tuesday. Tuesday will just be a girls game at home against Jefferson Academy. We will not have that game. We'll have brush wrestling as the Beat Diggers will be in Burlington to take on the Cougars. So the next Beat Digger action on 10-10 will be coming up a week from today. Sound engineer and producer of Brush Beat Digger basketball has been Rose Condes. Another great job tonight with some difficult circumstances during that third quarter. For Jen Goodall, I'm John Beltran. The final score from Longmont as we are... Basically ascending to darkness here. Well, they turn out the lights pretty quickly. The Brush Lady Beat Diggers did win tonight, by the way. We brought you that score, 52-30. to 30. We thank the Swami Paul Acosta for that score. That was back in Brush as the Lady Beat Diggers got it done and won their 12th consecutive game. But here in Longmont, the final score tonight was Meade, 52, Brush 40, right here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. <laughs>